All right, welcome to the mod devlog for my first mod. In this mod devlog series, I want to show you my journey of developing my mod and showing you the ups and downs of mod making. But what exactly is my first mod going to be? Well, my idea is as follows. Resource slimes. I better always in the work, so no worries. You can think of this as resource bees mixed with slime rancher. A mod in which you can grow slimes and harvest valuable resources from them. So, I guess... Let's just begin. Of course, first of all, I started by setting up the project, which was done quickly as I've done this many times before. By the way, if you want to learn that as well, I will link the Forge 118 setup tutorial in the top right corner so you can take a look at that. Now, I am using Forge 118.2 for this mod, the reason being that I do want this mod to possibly be added to mod packs in the future, and I am more familiar with Forge rather than Fabric, so that is the reason. However, a Fabric version is not out of the question, but not right now. I first of all want to get some functionality done, and then a Fabric version might be something in the future. After the quick setup was complete, I immediately jumped in and added some basic items that do nothing, and some basic blocks that also do nothing, and you will see that in particular these blocks look absolutely horrendous. Yes, this is the first important lesson here. You don't need everything perfectly set up in the beginning. That means you don't have to have all of the textures, because it doesn't matter, you can always change them. The most important thing is that you can and you must start, even if you don't have everything perfectly ready yet. This includes the textures, the ideas, maybe even not knowing how to code certain things, you're gonna learn as you go along. So you have to start regardless of whether or not you don't have everything already set up. You can always change textures, ideas, and code as you go along. So please keep that in mind. It is very important to start. That's the most important step. And then you can always change things afterwards. After I had added my items and blocks, I did get the itch to start adding the slimes as well. So I was like, okay, let's think about this. I broke down what I wanted the slimes to do. The most important thing was that I can harvest resources from them. So that would be the first step. I saved the resource as an item stack in the entity and made it spawn it by right-clicking. I figured that one out by looking at the code for the sheep entity, which is another incredibly valuable lesson, and that is the vanilla code is your best friend. If you want to copy some functionality from vanilla Minecraft, it is very straightforward to go into the code from vanilla, take a look at how it's done, and then slightly modify it so that it suits your needs. And now I had normal looking slimes that I could right-click and get resources from, but only once. After some tinkering, I figured out how to do that as well, and I thought, well, I really don't want my slimes to split when they die, so I made them not split. And then I saw that the resources didn't save properly. So after logging some debugs, I found the issue, and it actually wasn't that it doesn't save properly, it actually didn't read it in properly. So I played around with it until it worked. Yay! I then wanted to tackle some of the visuals, so I tried myself at a custom slime renderer. And to be perfectly honest, it was way easier than I expected. I made a method that would return the path of the slime based on the resources that it drops, so that it's easier to expand later down the line, and I don't have to change the slime renderer every time I add a new resource, it all just works perfectly. Yeah, and it did end up working perfectly. I mean, I mean look at this. The perfect screenshot material. Except maybe for the particles, but we'll deal with those in a future devlog. I finally added a spawn egg because I didn't want to keep using commands, and then I tackled the size of the slimes. Now what's very interesting about the size is that currently they spawn in random sizes, right, just like normal slimes would. But I want them to grow proportionally to the amount of resources that you can harvest from them. The vanilla slime's minimum size is 1, while the maximum size is 127. So I thought, easy going, when you have a stack of resources, you're just gonna have the slime in size 127. So I overwrote the tick method, made it so that slimes can grow after a certain amount of ticks, and was ready to see my slimes grow for the first time when I discovered this. Yeah, they were growing very fast, and in fact, they become huge very, very quickly. Now, I thought, wait a second, the max size is 127 for a slime. Yeah, but Minecraft only uses sizes 1 to 4, so naturally, I just made the growth rate insanely quick, and then I got this beauty. Oh my god. What is this? Oh my god, stop. I have to see how big this is. Oh my lord. 43, holy. Oh my god. It doesn't stop. Max size is 127. Oh my god. This is insane. 75 already. Oh my god. I mean this. <laughs> oh my... 
This is not. Oh no. This is so big. No. I can't even right click it. Is the slime swimming or is it on like one block somewhere? Oh no, this is not good. I want to know how big the slime is. Oh no. Oh my god. It should stop at 64, but holy. This is insane. This is not, this is not perspective over here. <laughs> oh my god, that's insane. That is actually insane. I thought that max size was 127. They're only using four integers. Why? Absolutely amazing. That is that is absolutely. I believe that that is the whole size. I wonder how far it would jump. Wow, that is crazy. All right, let's let's get uh, back to some normal stuff. But enough messing around, I changed the size as well, so after some refactoring and adding some more debugging, I made it so that the slimes will grow from 1 to 4, depending on how many resources they have, and no longer to 127, because that would be ridiculous. Right, and that basically concludes the first mod devlog. I'm actually really happy with my progress here for the first episode. There are still so many things that I've planned for this mod, and I hope you can join me on the journey with these mod devlogs. And in the future, I might even ask you for some feedback and what you think of certain features as well. I hope that this can show you some of the inner workings of making a mod and maybe even inspire you to start your own. Any feedback and suggestions for both the mod as well as the mod devlogs would be greatly appreciated. And at the end here, I also want to thank my lovely Patreon supporters for supporting the channel. Channel. You make these non-tutorial videos very much possible, so thank you very much, and thank you all for watching this video. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new, and I'll see you in the next video. So, yeah. <laughs>